Okay, cool. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rakhi Sharma, and I am here today after close to 1.5 years to talk about Servo after it restarted. January 2023 was the time when Servo restarted. So even before like, I start talking about Servo, a bit about me, I already told you my name. <laughs> I am Rakhi. I'm an open source engineer working on Servo project. I work at Egalia on web platform team. I'm also a Servo Technical Steering Committee member. And you can find me on the internet with ATB Rakhi. I think uh, that's the username I go with, with everywhere. <laughs> So people who are not aware of Servo, what is Servo? Servo is a web rendering engine that is written in Rust. It has WebGL and WebGPU support, and it is adaptable to desktop, mobile, and embedded application. It is literally running on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and even Android. Um, to talk about like Servo's journey, it had a long journey. It started back in 2012 at Mozilla Research, and some people might be wondering how it is, you know, uh, it was written in Rust, but why and what is the story behind? At Mozilla Research, there was a team working on Rust programming language and there was a team working on Servo project. Both of them were working closely. Servo uh, will use Rust programming language. Feedbacks will be exchanged between the team and then um, so the Rust programming team would improve or take the feedback and then it will be like uh, moved back and forth between server project because server project was uh, the first project where the Rust programming language was being used. And fast forward, Rust went ahead and became a mature programming language while server was also on its way to become a mature rendering engine. But server also had some, uh, I would say, setbacks. Um, but if you are active in Rust community or even in browser world, you would know around 2016, 2017, uh, Servo was really doing great and it was on its way to uh, really become a mature rendering engine. But in 2020, Mozilla's layoff impacted the whole Servo team and the whole Servo team uh, was laid off. There were few people, the core team people, who were trying to maintain this project even after Mozilla's layoff. But if you are working in open source community, you know uh, that the, just the personal time is not enough for it. In 2020, Servo project joined the Linux Foundation. And in 2022, talks about restarting Servo started, but how, who will start this project? Because if you're talking about any open source project, right, it just doesn't need engineers, it also needs funding, it needs new contributors, and it needs lots of people, right? So in 2023, it was restarted at Egalia, a team was formed and restarted. But who, who are Egalia? Why they started this project? So Egalia is an open source consultancy founded in 2001. It has 140 plus people working fully remote, close to 25 countries, and it has flat structure, cooperative-like model. And they are the top contributors in Chromium, WebKit, and Gecko. This last point is really important because when we are talking about Servo, the rendering engine, it is huge. We are talking about a browser, right? We are talking about a rendering engine. If you if you think of browser, you think of rendering engine because without a rendering engine, what, what even is a browser, right? There is no definition. So um, Igalia had lots of experience. They had people who have like decades of experience working on rendering engine and browser. They had um, people working on not just rendering engine, but browser itself as well. So I, I personally couldn't think of a better fit for a server project to restart it. Um, but after uh, we restarted the project in January 2023, uh, we made an announcement post and it was pretty much very <laughs> well received by the community. Um, in this one image, I see lots of emotions. I see some people are very surprised that Servo is back. Some people are like, was Servo dead or is it alive? So lots of emotions in just like one image, right? Uh, but it was very well received by the community, uh, the Rust community and the browser community and as well as the open source community itself. So Servo in 2023, when we restarted Servo, we thought, what are the things we want to work on? Like there is one project and you have to choose what is the priority. So for the first half, we worked on taking the project out of the maintenance mode, doing some outreach work, because if there is no outreach work, how would you know uh, that project has restarted, right? Um, and the maintenance uh, work meant taking out the Servo project out of the maintenance mode, 
updating the dependencies, updating, um, updating all, the, <laughs> all the things that needed an update. For example, uh, one of them was to moving to the uh, stable Rust. That was very important for us to do because that would mean that we are, we are making it easy for other people to use Servo in their project. And we also worked on Layout Engine, adding uh, many features and CSS uh, to support. Uh, we built internal WPT and servo demos, and as well as we worked, uh, we did quite a lot of embedding work last year. I'm gonna like uh, talk about all these points uh, a bit more deeper in the next slides. So let's let's take it one by one. Restarting servo, right? So if you if you see the graph, you will see that uh, servo had a downtime after 2020, and in 2023 it kind of started to uh, move uh, up, and uh, we had close to 2,500 commits, 1,000 plus pull request, and 53 unique contributors. And this is, this is already a huge thing because it was in maintenance mode for three plus year and we had 50 plus unique uh, contributors there. We spent the first half of the year last year taking it out of the maintenance mode and improving our docs and the wiki as well. Because if we are not going to improve our docs or the wiki, how we are making it easy for other people to come and contribute. And not just servo project, but any project without contributors <laughs> is pretty much nothing. It's safe to say you can't move a project forward, open source project forward if you don't have contributors, right? So once we restarted the project, things started moving. We had unique contributors we built servo demos. Again, we are talking about contributors, right? And we are talking about servo project. As an engineer, I can tell you, hey, I'm writing code, I'm building this product, and I'm building X, Y, Z. But as a user, how would you know, unless you are really interested in seeing how, how my code looks and going to you know clone and run things and see, okay, let me see what is going on in the code, right? But we wanted to provide a way for people to just simply test uh, servo feature. So we built lots of demos. We built this website where we moved all the, all the demos. So for example, for you right now, there are two ways to test servo. If you are someone who loves to build things and set up things, you can just clone the uh, servo repository and set it up locally and run. Other option is to go to servo website, servo.org and download servo application from there. Once you download the application, just open this website and click on one of the demos. We have WebGL demos, WebGPU demos. This is just like the first four uh, demos. I took just a screenshot to show you, but there are uh, many of them. And you can, you can really open it, and then uh, you can also open this one in Firefox and Chrome, and you can compare you know, uh, screen to screen and see how it is doing. After uh, building server demos, we worked on internal WPT dashboard. This was important for us because we wanted to track how Servo is doing or Servo's layout is doing when it comes to web platform test. And in next slides, you will be seeing more of these graphs and hopefully that will make it more straightforward for you to realize why it was important. We really wanted to see where we are today and where we are moving tomorrow. We are adding a feature today and we wanted to say how it affected the internal, um, like how it affected the web platform test. And once we built the internal WPT test, we had to make a big choice. We had to make a choice between layout engine. So if you're not aware, uh, Servo has two layout engine. It still has, but we are using layout 2022 that I will be referring to as new layout engine and the layout 2013 that is legacy. We are very close to removing the legacy uh, layout completely. So hopefully uh, I'm counting on doing this uh, in 2024, <laughs> by end of this year. Um, layout 2013, uh, as it says, legacy, right? So Servo started around 2012, and it is legacy because around the same time they started working on the layout and then they uh, utilized all the features that came with Rust programming language, such as parallelization and many other things. But I am I'm going to keep this parallelization part there. But at some point, after a few years, they realized that the layout and all the features that have been added is going pretty far from the specification. And if you are far from specification, that means you are making it hard for the next generation contributors to come and contribute to your project. 
And that's why at some point, like around 2018, 20, uh, 2019, the core team realized that uh, it's, it's time to find a way to still keep the parallelization, but have the code base or the features that we are implementing in the layout close to the specification. So around uh, 2020, they started working on the new layout. So this is not something that we started in 2023. It was already there uh, as the core team started in layout uh, uh, in 2020. So um, when we restarted the project, we had to make a choice because when we restarted the project, we were a small team. and with a small team, you can't do the same work in the new layout as well as in the old layout. You can't like, uh, it's safer to say you can't afford to do that because we want to, you know, keep moving. So uh, we did a report on it. If you're curious about how we um, decided and how we uh, moved forward, it, uh, forward with it, you, you should definitely uh, read the report. This is available on Servo GitHub Wiki as well as on Servo website. Uh, we decided to move forward with layout 2020. Um, and we always had this in mind, right? That, uh, okay, let's go ahead, add some features to layout 2020, the new layout, and we will see how it goes. And if we realize that, okay, this is not a good idea, we can always go back and continue the legacy one. So, um, but, but the uh, decision we took was the correct decision. We ended up adding lots of feature to layout 2020 and one of the biggest feature that we added was floats. Floats is something that is used in almost every website. You can open a website and you can see if floats is not supported, right? So if you see, once we added the float support, you can see um, how the graph went. This is again the uh, our internal web platform test dashboard. The red line you see is the legacy layout. So you can see the floats was already supported and close to 40% web platform tests were already passing in legacy layout. And in April 2023, 20, uh, we had less than 20% of the WPT test passing. So uh, in mid-June, I think we started working on it. In September, we made it by default. We enabled it by default. And right now, mid-April, we have close to 90% of floats test passing in servo layout engine. And other than floats, we also uh, worked on another big feature that was adding support to tables. And adding support to tables meant getting the Space Jam website <laughs> running correctly. If you're a Space Jam fan, this is for you. Uh, this is rendering very well in Servo. And that also meant we are passing quite a lot of uh, web platform tests. Again, the red one is the legacy layout and the blue one is the servo layout. So with the, um, you can see that in starting, it is pretty much closed. We already had a PR open for tables, but the problem was it was like when the downtime happened, it wasn't merged during that time. It was like there for three years almost. So what we did was like, we rebased it, we added the missing features or missing bits, and then we, uh, we merged it and kept adding the new features um, that was related to tables. And we uh, earlier this year, we enabled it by default. And when I'm saying we enabled it by default, when we start working on feature, we don't enable it by default at the start. Once it is at some stable position, we enable it by default, and then we keep adding the features uh, to it. So um, now you can see that uh, we have uh, crossed the legacy layout, and we are close to 62%, I would say, or somewhere between 60, 70% uh, when it comes to passing web platform test. And uh, this is like two big features I'm talking about because this took quite a lot of time, but there were many small features that we have been working on. We spent quite a lot of time, like it's it was a regular thing. We are continuously adding new features to the layout and uh, many of them, div align, center, sticky positioning, vertical align, um, text align, and also we are doing uh, big refactorings that needs to be done in any other project. <laughs> I would say we are migrating the floating point coordinates to fixed point coordinates. This will uh, help us uh, avoid lots of web platform test failures. And also one of the reasoning behind this was like the old layout is using the fixed point coordinates, that is AU app units. So we decided to um, move, uh, we decided to use app units in new layout as well. Um, but like layout, right? We are talking about layout, but 
there are another in there is another thing at the start of the talk i mentioned that there has to be a way when you are working on a product or a project there has to be a way for other people to test it and hence we decided to work on uh, embedding part of the servo how we can make it easier for other people to embed servo because servo is a rendering engine right so if it is a rendering engine and you're not able to render it what's the point there were lots of work already going on um, on servo uh, around embedding around like in 2019 2020 but uh, it needed more work so um, the idea was simple to start other people uh, to make it easy for other people to use servo and also to to have servo run on embedded device uh, like raspberry pi 4 um, if you are someone who is interested in embedded device and how uh, servo is being embedded there uh, you should definitely visit us at Egalia booth because we have Raspberry Pi 4, 400 and 500 running servo there so you can you can even you know play around with uh, Raspberry Pi and servo uh, all together um, when it comes to embedding this has been a request from community for so long servo started in 2012 and I just went on internet to see for how long they have been asking for it. Um, if you see in the bottom corner, you will see 11 years ago. We are in 2024 and someone was asking about servo embedding in 2013. So we are, we are talking about a decade plus, right? So this, this like tells us a lot about how important it was for us to focus on embedding and hence we ended up uh, doing quite a lot of work in improving how, um, embedding API and how to make it easy for others to use servo. And mid last year we decided to start with something small. We decided to build a mini browser. We already had this window with us that is built using Winit. We decided to use eGUI to build the location bar and the toolbar, uh, back forward go button that you see up there. And once we were pretty much done with it, we had good idea about, okay, how we are going to move forward and make it, uh, make our embedding API easier. Um, right now, if you go to Servo website and download uh, Servo, you will be uh, seeing this whole window and you can even browse around, open, open different website and see how, how it looks. And once we release this, it didn't just make it easy for us, it made it easy for others also to test it. I'm saying it made it easy for us, but how, how that happened, right? So. Once we released this, there were people who were able to access Servo easily. They were able to browse websites and other things they wanted uh, pretty straightforward. They, you could just download or just uh, build and run Servo and browse the website. And once you are easily able to browse the website, that means you are easily able to find the missing features or problems that exist and maybe as a developer we don't notice so it's uh, so lots of people came in and reported lots of bug or the missing features so um, that helped us as well to to focus on what is important and um, there are lots of people who also <laughs> didn't wanted the location bar on the top so we also uh, allowed them to not have any mini browser so you just need to add the no mini browser flag while running servo and then location bar should disappear. Um, after the mini browser work, we were also talking to Tauri folks and with Tauri, we collaborated to integrate servo in Rai project. And of course, thanks a lot to NLNet Foundation for sponsoring this work. Um, what we did with Tauri is Tauri has a project called Rai Rai is a fully open source web view library. It is still uh, very much in experimental phase. It uses right now WebKit GTK behind the scenes um, as a rendering engine. And they wanted to see how Servo would do. Can they integrate Servo and run it? And result is in front of you. <laughs> That's the short answer. Um, but long, long answer is uh, we work together. We uh, exchange quite a lot of feedback, what they needed from us, what uh, they wanted from us to, that will make it easier for them to embed uh, Servo. So we had like a huge issue opened on GitHub that, that could talk about what, um, what we need to work on. And 
one of those things was making build process easier. And we did end up working on providing an easier way to, uh, to build our biggest dependencies, C++ dependencies, that was Mozangle and Mod.js. And we ended up providing shared object um, for Mozangle. We have a static library for Mod.js right now, and there is a work going on for shared object for Mod.js as well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and that was like uh, Tauri folks were able to integrate Servo and this, uh, they shared this demo with us and we also checked out. So if, if you are a system person, great, you can check out Servo, right? And the very cool thing about this experiment is like, Imagine like if, if one of you are front end engineer, you don't need to care about server project. You don't need to care about what is going on inside Rye. You just need to write some HTML and CSS. So in this example, at least you can imagine some uh, HTML and then some uh, CSS for the animation. And then you just need to run that file and that should be it. Rye will take care of your requirements and Servo will take care of rendering things. And Servo will take care of the layout. Right, so uh, that was very easy. Even even I went ahead and built a small timer, and ju I just wanted to see uh, as a front end if I am a front end engineer, what I am supposed to do because Ry is also written in Rust, Servo is written in Rust, and uh, maybe I don't care about Rust, you know, or maybe not many people care about Rust. So what I am supposed to do as a front end engineer? So I just had to write HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript to build a timer, and that was it. Even you can check it out on my GitHub profile. <laughs> I don't have a link here. Um, but that, that was it, and I just needed to run it, and then timer was working fine. So, um, so I was taking care of uh, rendering things, and I was taking care of the web view part. So this was, this was a successful collaboration uh, for us with Tauri. And after that, we had uh, Dioxys. Um, this was the third embedding part we were working on. Um, they did something very unique. Uh, we are talking about server rendering engine as whole, right? But what they do, did unique was they just took a part of servo and played around with it. They took the stylo and, and they used it for uh, like styles and selector matching. And um, if you know, stylo is like uh, maintained by uh, Mozilla, uh, upstream is maintained by Mozilla and we have a downstream as well. Um, and learning from this experience, uh, there were also a few comments from the uh, community and other uh, people that they would like to use Stylo and how we can make it easier for them. So we learned from this experience because like when we are making uh, embedding easy for other people, it is also important for us to take the feedback and to learn from their experience. So we learned from their experience and moved the Stylo part out of our main repo, like we moved the stylo, took it out from the serv servo uh, repository and moved it to a separate repository. So even in future, if someone wants to uh, use stylo, it's a bit easier for them now. They don't need to care about servo as a whole rendering engine, right? And I, after Dioxys, the recent one is KDAP Qt. They managed to run servo inside Qt and uh, they used the CXX, CXX Qt library as bridge. And this library is like safe intro between Rust and Qt. You can think of it as like um, bi-directional, uh, like for C++ and Rust binding. And they were able to do it successfully. So this was pretty cool from, that, uh, from their side as well. And uh, most of the time, like when someone is trying to embed Servo in their product, uh, they are coming to us and asking, hey, uh, we need X feature or Y feature. Um, but the, the unique thing about Keda was like, they managed to run Servo as it is, like however or whatever state we are in, they uh, managed to run it. And uh, that doesn't mean we are in bad state. <laughs> we, are, we are experimental, we are in pretty good shape and we are moving forward. Um, so that is a good thing about it. So after, after embedding, we had uh, more things going on. We had um, Servo on Android as well. Like I was saying, Servo is available on Windows. It is running on Windows. It is running on Linux and Mac OS. I'm using Mac OS, so it is running there as well. But we also wanted to add uh, Servo on Android. So uh, I think towards the end of the last year, we started working on um, adding Android build support. We do have Android build support now. Uh, we 
also um, have Servo running on Android emulator. Um, we had some problems, but we fixed it earlier this year, and we also have support for x86-64 images. Um, and I think we landed this support recently. You can see a screenshot as well that we took. Servo is running on Android now. Um, now that, like, I kind of feel like I'm already talking about 2024 because the last part is something we landed, I think, last month or uh, last to last month. Um, and while we, I'm talking about 2024, uh, Servo also took a step further in some other ways. Servo uh, participated in Outreachy. Outreachy uh, is a three-month paid remote internship program. Uh, so we participated in this project and we had many contributors coming in and contributing uh, to server project uh, during the contribution phase. Um, we had lots of people sending patches to improve the code health and the docs as well as the layout of server uh, project. Now that we are talking about uh, like uh, 2024, where we are going from here. So our future roadmap pretty much involves adding initial support to Android. Uh, we added already some support to Android and we want to continue doing the work. We uh, also want to continue doing the embedding work. We have uh, we have like few uh, people using Servo this year. We want to take all the feedbacks that we have been getting and we want to work on improving the embedding APIs and letting other people know that you know you can you can use uh, servo and everything. So do lots of outreach work um, so that people are aware what is going on in the servo project. And one of the reason why I'm here because I want uh, other people to know that we have restarted the project and where we are now. Uh, we also want to continue adding CSS support. We want to continue doing that work and the project maintenance. You can keep adding the features. Um, but project maintenance is important, right? If you just keep adding the feature and don't do the maintenance, how are it gonna work? So uh, that is also in our roadmap. Um, after the roadmap, I think uh, you can also support us. We recently, we listed ourselves in on Open Collective as well as on GitHub. You can uh, either use Open Collective to uh, donate to Servo Project or you can sponsor us on GitHub, or if in case you want to talk di directly to us, you can also reach out to us at info at servo.org. Um, support is important from community. So uh, with that, thanks a lot. Thank you for listening. I am around, so feel free to ask questions. I'm also at the Galia booth. Uh, so if you want to try the Raspberry Pi or have questions about uh, embedding servo, or if you have projects that you would like to uh, embed servo in, feel free to reach out. Thank you. So uh, right now, uh, unfortunately for 2024, it is not in the plan, but we do want to add um, support for accessibility. Right now, Servo is at very early stage, so we don't have uh, it in the plans for 2024. But we do plan to add it. It's important to mention that we do talk about it and we do want to add the support. I think we are five, six people. Yeah. Uh, what's the extent of the plan support for the Android or the, the platform like non deployed stuff? Yeah, so um, I think the initial plan was to have the initial support. And right now we just have the support for x86, 64 images and uh, this was landed recently, I would say last month. So from here, we do want to keep adding more support, but like there, if, if you're asking if you want to stop at some point, no, we don't have any plans of like, uh, okay, you know, after having XYZ support, we want to stop there. We are like, okay, let's keep adding more and more support and uh, probably in future we will decide that, okay, you know, we have enough support and maybe we can focus on other parts. So I think uh, that's how we want to move forward. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that Egalia is working on a number of rendering engines. I'm, I'm just curious, is this, you mentioned um, there was some interest in making the standards all work properly. I think uh, referencing maybe how when Git slash whatever Chrome you use is becoming the default. Is that kind of uh, uh, the, the general goal of 
So I would say uh, Igalia has been working on browser and rendering engine a long since like, I don't know, Igalia started in 2001. So I would say they might have been working on browsers for already a decade. And Servo came into the picture, I think maybe two years ago. So I won't say that the Igalia went like, oh, you know, uh, we are gonna take over all the, <laughs> all the rendering engine. I don't think that was the plan. It was more like, okay, Igalia has experience working on it. And we had people showing interest that, hey, you have uh, experience working on it. Can you probably help restart this project? And that's how Igalia ended up um, taking over this project and restarting this project. Yeah, I would say initially it's not very good state right now. It's not uh, in a very good state right now, but we do have, I think we have one contributor, Sagudev, who is continuously sending some patches to, uh, to add WebGPU feature and to uh, continue updating the dependencies or, or uh, like just keep adding new features. But I think it is just one contributor who is uh, looking into it right now. So right now I would say, we do have this one WebGPU example on our demo page that runs really well on Servo, but still to be at a good place, we still need to do quite a lot of work. <laughs> 